Assalamualaikum dan uh, selamat kembali ke FTV. Uh, jadi hari ini bermula saya rasa satu siri of uh, shorter podcast uh, dengan uh, Zero Emission Vehicle Association. Jadi Ziva ni kalau kita tengok dia punya peranan dia ialah sebagai Uh, kumpulan penggerak lakut advocacy group untuk uh, kenderaan uh, pencemaran sifar, zero emission dan uh, dia orang ada certain kind of target dan certain kind of objektif yang dia orang nak capai kan jadi ingat minggu lepas kita dah cerita tentang My EV Owners Club punya wish list dan selepas tu pun kita dah cerita tentang Toyota yang beli Toyota dengan Proton punya wish list for bajet baru ni dan kita tengok of course My EV Owners Club cerita pasal EV lah dan surprising tak surprising Toyota dengan Proton pun bercerita pasal EV juga uh, dan hari ni kita teruskan dengan tema tersebut uh, Zeva ni dia menarik sebab dia mewakili pelbagai pihak lah maksudnya dia mewakili jenama uh, semua jenama-jenama yang uh, menawarkan ataupun mahu menawarkan kereta elektrik saya rasa kebanyakannya dah ada dalam uh, Zeva kemudian dia juga um, mewakili uh, power supplier macam TNB, uh, Jentari dan juga dia juga mewakili uh, charging point operators dan uh, also my evo juga diwakili di sini dan juga ada research institute lah so pertama sama kita hari ini ialah uh, presiden zero emission vehicle association C Jonazi so uh, how sekarang ni keadaan ni selepas uh, tahun lepas mungkin uh, ramai yang bersorak kita berjaya dapat uh, pelepasan cukai Ha? Yep. yang tak disangka-sangka lah ha? untuk import duty untuk uh, excise duty import tax kan? import tax, excise duty dan juga road tax kan? Road tax. so selepas uh, dah masuk bulan ke-9 ni can you cerita sikit tak apa you rasa the state of the EV world sekarang Malaysia ni ok terima kasih first of all uh, Tuan Nanti Samsung uh, to the apa uh, to invite us Ziva uh, this morning and uh, we we totally appreciate your the effort that you put that you put in as far as um, uh, this ef, apa, this advocacy thing juga lah. I think what you're doing is help, helping to advocate people to use EV sebenarnya you know? and you provide all this information all this uh, podcast and, and stuff like that um, to answer your first question how things are and how things have rather how things have been since uh, uh, last year when we mm. got that tax breaks I think um, we see the demand for EVs going up Um, uh, we note that in, uh, for for certain certain makes certain brands, demand is outstripping supply. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, if you order today, maybe you can only get your car 12, 13 months later, which okay. is okay. which is really uh, a bit of a apa, a pain to to some of the buyers out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we see the demand panting up dekat sini, uh, which is very good sebenarnya. Um, and but with demand, there's also a bit of a challenge. Because um, as far, especially in the public charging infrastructure lah, mm-hmm. um, yes, uh, the 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 tax breaks are good for for buyers of EVs, but we also need to make sure that uh, in tandem with that, the the public charging infrastructure also grows together with the. So with sekarang the ni dalam keadaan di mana permintaan untuk kereta tu dah banyak, yeah. tapi delivery saya rasa tahun ni tak banyak sangat kot. Yeah yeah, so that's, that's supply a masih supply, lagi berkalang, supply crunch lagi. yeah mm-hmm. betul betul. Mm-hmm. Jadi yeah. dengan tambahan jumlah EV dekat jalan raya ni adakah uh, Zeva dapati ada masalah tentang rangkaian charge tu sendiri? Ya, yeah, we we see a lot of people uh, uh, not say a lot some are complaining that uh, there's not enough uh, bila dia travel on the highway especially hmm. uh, long distances um, bila sampai kat tempat uh, charging tu sama ada dia kena queue ataupun you know every challenge is masa hujan lah masa hujan kalau di covered people you know simply park their cars and motorbikes kat situ that's that's the, the issue yang kita nampak lah um, but but uh, really we, we that is one area that we need to work on i mean we the, the cars dah ada incentive dia uh, for people to purchase tapi this is another area yang we 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 feel that we need to work on uh, from now onwards because Really, it has to go hand in hand, charging and and the cars themselves. So, itu yang kita kita nampak. And then um, um, and uh, LCMB dah mention the low carbon mobility blueprint dah mention a few figures dalam tu mm. um, in terms of charging infrastructure. And I think that's the guide that we should be all of us should be working at. The, the target seems to be uh, fairly reasonable, 10,000 yes, by 2025, 25, kan? Yes, yes. 
with ah. 1000 AC and 1000 DC lah hmm, uh, hmm, 2025 hmm. Jadi itu sebenarnya cukup untuk berapa ribu kenderaan? Okay, um, we feel that it should be enough for about kalau 2025 about 30 to 40,000 uh, kenderaan sepatutnya Cukup, cukup untuk cukup, kadar cukup. Itu, eh? yeah, yeah, yeah. So sekarang ni uh, apakah kadar pembinaan uh, charger tu sendiri uh, okay. uh, boleh capai ke? Kita boleh capai ke target 10,000 okay. charger ni dalam So um, if you see now dekat uh, highway kita kan uh, there are only 6 uh, I'm talking about the the north south expressway lah. So sepanjang utara selatan tu ada 6 6 sahaja, 6 sahaja uh, apa nama ni DC fast chargers. Okay. So but this figure we So maksudnya at any one time hanya 6 kereta je lah boleh charge. Uh, at any one time maximum 6 kereta betul betul. And this ranges from Ini menakutkan semua orang <laughs> kan dah. This ranges from 50 kilowatt DC uh, to uh, sekarang ni 180 lah which is yang dekat dekat uh, apa tu um, uh, shell punya ha. charger tu kan. Ha, ha, ha. And then uh, but this figure we foresee uh, dengan new development you know shell is uh, we know that they are they are also installing charges DC fast charges at other stations. TNB is also we know is, is you know in the works of uh, installing a few a few um, number of charges also. This figure from six ni will go to more than twenty uh, okay. towards the end of this year. Okay. Yeah, towards the end of this year. So it's, I, it's nampak macam berganda lah. Eh? Ha ha ha. Tiga, so tiga kali ganda lah. Yeah, ini Tapi dua puluh tu masih lagi satu. Jauh daripada seribu kan? Jauh daripada seribu. <laughs> <laughs> ha, menakutkan lah kan? Yeah yeah, ha, yeah. So kalau kata kita nak sampai ke seribu tu kita ada dua puluh tiga, dua puluh empat, dua puluh lima. Uh, kita ada 3 tahun lah 3 tahun which means setahun dalam 250 ke, oh ya, 300, 300 tahun lah basically betul, kan betul, lah. betul, betul, so, sekarang betul. ni pun ada 20 kan betul, lah. betul, betul, so kata betul. 300 tahun that means hari satu lah lebih kurang betul betul. dan kita tak ada nampak berita yang <laughs> sebanyak itu kan ya yeah, ya yeah, ya yeah. I mean target remains as a target uh, is is how much you know how 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 effective we are in achieving that target lah kan hmm. of course we work towards towards achieving that target um, uh, but um, apa nama ni? Uh, it, I think it all boils down to how 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 fast we can achieve, how fast we can build the charges sebenarnya. Hmm. So sekarang ni, to me, uh, benda-benda ni semua uh, bergantung kepada uh, tahap maklumat yang ada bagi kita. Mm -hmm. Right? So you rasa apakah uh, tahap maklumat yang ada pada kita di Malaysia ni sama ada dekat tahap kerajaan? tahap syarikat dan tahap awam mengenai EV ni apa you rasa persepsi orang tentang EV in general oh, ok um, I think uh, satu ialah EV ni masih lagi mahal sebenarnya walaupun dah ada tax breaks ni um, ke, apa model-model yang ada yang masuk ke Malaysia sekarang ni masih lagi consider high end betul so yang yang apa tu um, um, sesuai untuk rakyat uh, jelata semuanya masih belum ada lagi model-model yang sesuai betul, betul. Jadi that is one one perception yang saya nampak lah yang ataupun one it's not perception maybe it's a fact yeah. uh, yang saya nampak yang kita nampak yang keduanya is uh, still a lacking of um, uh, this public infrastructure ni public charging infrastructure lah okay. um, ada ada yang especially yang duduk dekat condominium dan juga high rises okay. yang susah nak charge yang yang really really have to depend on uh, apa nama ni public charging infrastructure. Okay. So, itu yang kedua lah. Hmm. Jadi uh, yang ketiganya yang kita nampak ialah uh, apa the lack the lack of uh, apa nama ni more EV friendly policies daripada kerajaan. Hmm. Okay. Kita rasa hmm. Hmm. Uh, of course we are thankful thankful to the government for giving us the the tax breaks baru yang last year. Hmm. But we wish there there are more um, uh, apa nama ni uh, catalyst in terms of uh, incentive daripada kerajaan lah hmm. untuk bantu kita apa achieve all these targets yang you mentioned tadi interesting that you should say that because my next question is um, adakah uh, okay, tak kira kerajaan ke syarikat ke awam ni merasakan transformasi ke EV ni ada sesuatu yang penting ke rasa ke ataupun pada dia masih benda yang macam saya rasa penting saya rasa even the government even PM pun ada mention in, in, in many instances yang dia 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 mention uh, dalam uh, seminar dan convention yang dia 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 launch you know ataupun dia dia officiated dia pun mention about the need for us to you know 
uh, move towards uh, zero emission and um, there are certain uh, apa nama ni um, insentif juga daripada kerajaan dengan uh, menyediakan zero sorry menyediakan apa ni um, task force EV task force yang diketuai oleh MITI sekarang ni okay. so ada effort lah towards that end and i think because that that shows that the government is also serious in doing this and uh, apa nama ni banyak-banyak a few a few announcement yang kita kita nampak, kita nampak daripada kerajaan contohnya penggunaan EV patut digunakan di event-event yang besar-besar ini dianjurkan oleh kerajaan that's one we know that um, uh, our kasa minister pun dah mention about yang yang buat kasa minister dah mention about moving towards EV for the for the government new fleets mm-hmm. jadi i think um, because of that uh, we see some concerted effort lah Uh, from the government uh, to to move towards towards uh, zero emission punya punya transportation dekat Malaysia ni. So sekarang ni the reason dia orang uh, nak nak galakkan uh, EV ni ialah kerana atas dasar apa? Atas sebab apa sebenarnya? Sebab alam sekitar ke sebab yeah. apa sebenarnya? Saya rasa from the government point of view is more about alam sekitar. Kita ada commitment uh, we are part of the COP26 punya signatory. Jadi we have that commitment. Jadi I think the government just wants to make that happen lah sebenarnya. Um, well, there are challenges, no doubt. Every country ada challenges ni masing-masing. But, but I think as a country, we've got to move towards that 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 uh, that route lah. Do you think target. that we, we as in general Malaysia ni, the government ke siapa siapa ke, rasa benda ni is um, more like a cost that you need to bear atau macam mana? Yeah, it's at the end of the day, it's still it's a cost. Definitely, it's a cost. Hmm. But a cost for a good reason. Cost for a good reason, kan? Uh, we have to invest on this because we are talking about the future. We are talking about our, yelah, our environment in the future where we need to address as a, as a country, as a nation. Um, uh, and only only by doing this that we can actually address the the emission of uh, hazardous gas coming from the transport sector by moving towards by moving from ICE vehicles to EVs. Itu saja yang kita nampak. Tak kira lah EV could be battery EV, could be fuel hydrogen, fuel cell EVs, you know. But EVs are the the, the way forward for for us to transform or to to move from uh, apa nama ni um, uh, emission based to zero emission punya vehicles. Ada yeah, some look at it lah. Okay, that's that's clearly memang uh, target yang semua kita sebut lah ialah uh, carbon reduction lah kan. Right. Trying to go to carbon neutrality. Um, tapi saya tak nampak ramai orang bercakap tentang kelebihan ekonomi anjakan ke EV ni. Oh, okay. Actually, um, uh, the the economic benefit uh, of EV ni goes way beyond apa yang kita fikirlah. Uh, okay lah, we, we talk about the environment, greener, cleaner environment, that's one. But we also see EV ni sebenarnya satu suntikan kepada kita punya automotive industry. Betul. You know, sebab um, uh, we used to be the tiger of Asia when it comes mm-hmm. to automotive industry back in yeah. the 80s and yeah. 90s. Yeah. And but we see, you know, currently we are quite way behind. Bila kita tengok even our neighbours pun, apa tu Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, they are way way ahead than us sebenarnya. Mm-hmm. And we see EV need to be the medium for us to address that lah. I mean, with EVs ni, you know, we we can create new market, new technology, new skill sets you mm-hmm. know for for mm-hmm. our for the automotive industry because mm-hmm. actually with EV ni ada tiga benda yang aktif yang yang components yang yang perlukan highly skilled and highly highly uh, uh, um, apa nama ni uh, high skill sets uh, skill sets from our engineers mm. the battery technology mm-hmm. the software technology right. as well as the motor drive technology right. tiga benda ni yang yang saya rasa perlu uh, apa uh, new engineers new breed of engineers new breed of designers untuk kita apa um, uh, 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 create in the within the automotive industry and then from there itu satulah itu satu satu nilah satu area lah the second area is the support industry ni because after you design after you you manufacture after you sell you need people to support also betul so this this also can become the new economic apa nama ni uh, um, uh, 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 source for, for for the country sebenarnya right. so that service industry will become Uh, the, sorry, that supporting industry will become the 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 the, the new uh, way forward also for for our for our for our apa nama ni economy. 
And then not only that, um, um, I mentioned tadi um, the greener and cleaner punya punya ni uh, punya environment. And then with the with the new breed of uh, engineers and, and skill sets tadi, the they will you know the 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 the, the high the, they will get higher salary. And with higher salary, you know, better uh, social punya structure. So that kind of um, potential uh, uh, economic benefit that we can achieve as a country if we move, if we go for EV ni on a big scale. That's so, how we look at it. So the reason kenapa I tanya sempat tentang ekonomi itu is because bila I tanya, you immediately cakap, oh obviously the economic benefit is so much more, right? Betul. But we, we tak jarang kita dengar advocate group cakap pasal that. Mm-hmm. Semua orang cakap pasal the uh, environment tadi tu. Mm-hmm. And to me, the government ni, kalau nak tengok dia gerak cepat, dia sebut kat dia pasal duit lah. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they will move whatever needs to move heaven and earth if it's mm-hmm. for money, right? Mm-hmm. So which I think that is the reason kenapa benda ni jadi lambat is pasal pihak kerajaan tak nampak the the huge economic benefit, you know, of moving to EV. Yeah. Least of all, they don't see the foundational reason for moving to EV. Yeah. That is, if we move to renewable energy on mass, then the entire country punya energy bill just drops. Agreed, agreed. And we become energy Betul. sufficient. Betul. Sufficient. Betul. That's why Ziva is actually continuously engaging with the government, making them aware of this potential benefit to the country if we go big on EVs. Of course, um, it, it doesn't stop, after, uh, you know, uh, sekali dua kali jumpa dia orang mungkin tak berapa ni but mm-hmm. we need to, we need to continuously engage and and, and apa, uh, uh, apa apa nama ni educate everyone you know making them aware of the potential benefits and also uh, some of the things that we can uh, achieve uh, from from moving to towards EV ni um, we, definitely we uh, Ziva is continuously baru-baru ni pun dah ada jumpa uh, MOF and uh, kita pun dah bincang dengan dia orang and then they that kalau dapat that opportunity definitely we are going to apa nama ni um, uh, give that kind of uh, uh, information uh, to the to the powers that be lah mm. um, it's a continuous effort kita samsul kita tak boleh sekali dua je um, because awareness ni requires requires a lot of uh, a lot of uh, engagement a lot of uh, 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 enlightenment kan so kita juga tengok uh, some example countries yang dah berjaya dalam this 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 area or mm. this sector mm. Mm. and we should learn from 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 what they whatever they are doing mm. and try to adapt and adopt kat sini lah i raise it because i tak nampak banyak uh, points in that direction mm. being discussed mm. Mm. mostly orang cakap pasal the environment and we don't discuss about energy efficiency we don't yeah. discuss about even when we talk about industrial 4.0 kita tak cerita about primarily is about efficiency industry 4.0 is primarily about efficiency mm-hmm. lah kan ah uh, industry all industrial revolutions are about step increase mm-hmm. in energy efficiency mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. when we learn how to cultivate to farming that's a step increase in energy efficiency yep. when we learn metal tools that's a step increase in energy efficiency mm-hmm. the victorian uh, industrial revolution again we figured out to use steam step efficient increase in energy efficiency and now again another step increase in energy efficiency yeah, is not really about ev only and that's the argument yang i tak nampak lagi orang cerita in a yeah. very large which, which 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 i hope you will continue yeah, on that continue. And, yeah, yeah, and, I mean. and help us give pointers because the other thing that i i think masa kita mula-mula jumpa pun ada tanya you lah kan ah. whether we have any local studies about this specifically by local universities mm-hmm. so kita boleh just tunjuk kat government that if it's, it's like a simple argument you know uh, if you stick uh, one car off the road after five years how much in terms of fuel subsidy yang you dah jimat that, that number is just i don't see any i can come up with my own number lah but that, that's me Yeah, yeah. If Zeva comes up dengan UM ke dengan siapa ke come yeah. up with the number then yeah. they cannot say no to that right? Right, right, right. when you bring sale you kata you nak bawa masuk uh, a single 40 foot bus how many millions of liters of diesel does it save over 5 year lifetime and that's those just numbers I think yang baru the kerajaan kata oh okay because they are concerned about energy subsidy fuel subsidy yep. here's a way to solve that problem without having to solve the problem yeah, yeah. Right? This is a much more yeah. politically 
palatable solution. Yeah, we 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 acknowledge that. In fact, Ziva will be will be involved in one study um, by one particular organization, and uh, together with that organization, we are hope to come up with um, um, what the government can do to to address that that situation. Um, um, Macam you mentioned tadi lah, um, all these studies will be will be we are Ziva will be involved. Uh, and we're going to engage with so many parties mm. during that, that study mm. um, from the user end all the way to the supplier end uh, we are going to, to to engage and 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 um, um, hopefully uh, something good will come out of this study especially in the fuel subsidy punya punya area ni and uh, at the end of the day malaysia will 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 be benefiting from this so Fuel subsidy rationaliz- rationalization is high and on, on Zibab's agenda. Uh, it's one of the things that one of the thing one of the efforts that we are making at the moment. Um, ni, we want to engage with the government. The government has a few times mentioned about it, but we think that it's the it's the how to yang juang mungkin ada ada. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? I mean, yeah. I mean, the government acknowledges. I mean, we we see we see um, quite obvious lah. That, again, it's, ah, it's a quite obvious thing. We see. So um, when you say how to means what? Mana, yeah, yeah. Macam mana cara untuk kita kita uh, uh, apa tu um, implement this fuel subsidy ni? Sebab ada sensitivities. But why why worry about the fuel subsidy? Just get everybody on EV and then you don't have to worry about fuel subsidy. <laughs> betul betul. Yeah. But but um, um, bukan semua orang yang ada that kind of of thinking at, at this point. We still need to advocate. We still need to educate. We still need to make people aware of the benefits of using EVs. Ni. Oh, this is I, this is why I keep asking about the economic material. Pasal um, the moment orang nampak bahawa bila you pakai EV, you 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 kurangkan kos perbelanjaan pengangkutan you, semua orang akan nak. Betul betul. So ap, apa yang sekarang ni? Kat mana dia stumbling block? Kenapa masih ramai orang tak nampak benda okay. tu? Okay. Um, kita time again time and again uh, we we meet with uh, fleet owners hmm. because fleet ni is for us uh, a special group of people because they want they want own and they want operate a number of vehicles yeah, because yeah. satu-satu yeah, yeah. so if they mean, manage to replace their vehicles with EVs then the impact is going to be you know bigger than kalau satu-satu kan okay? betul the issue dia ataupun the main challenge here is the supply of commercial vehicles electric ev commercial vehicles kat sini right, 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 right. The, that is the 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 main issue yang saya nampak uh, yang yang kami di ziva nampak uh, 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 apa nama ni challenging for us in order to achieve that 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 transition so bila kita speak to um, these organizations they have very very high uh, apa nama ni awareness about moving to from 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 diesel or, or ice vehicle ice trucks to EV trucks, yeah. EV delivery trucks. Mm, mm, mm. Tetapi itulah bila dia orang try to get the 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 commercial vehicles punya punya supply dekat sini memang susah, memang betul, tak ada. Betul. So I mean I agree with that so, 110% because uh, memang pada pada tahun lepas pun saya dah kata dah what we nak push betul-betul push fleet dulu. Hmm. Eh, lepas dah push fleet, dia pasal dia banyak kelebihan dia. Hmm. Even if you tukar fleet delivery van Katalah you beli 500 delivery van, that's 500 drivers yang you dah influence. Betul, eh? betul, betul. Dan bila 500 drivers influence, dia balik, dia cerita kat dua orang, dah 1,500 people yes, influence. Yes. Last week, kita sembang dengan Mysuri ah, yang okay. nak bawa masuk taxi, taxi electric. Correct. Correct, kan, yeah, yeah. So, uh, for me, kalau jadi dia mau masuk bulan 11 ni, memang dia akan mengakibatkan satu anjakan besar lah. Sebab totally satu hari, agree. kalau tiga orang, empat orang naik pun... Right dah 3 4 kali ganda tiap-tiap hari orang naik yeah. then it's got no sound me yeah. thousands of people dah naik dan yes. akan rasa oh ini Macam je ni. ni kan mm-hmm. Eh? Mm-hmm. betul 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 itulah uh, apa we... cuma 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 sesi yang saya nak ni ialah kita push idea EV ni ialah benda yang menjimatkan mm-hmm. dan you kena nak so that kita nak rakyat push kerajaan mm-hmm. the reason why i say this because bila saya sembang dengan Malaysian Automotive Association atau AISHA mm-hmm. Dia punya pendapat ialah rakyat akan marah kalau kerajaan nak push ke EV. Saya macam kau college, saya tak faham kenapa. Hmm, nah. okay. So perception dia ialah this is a burden rather than a benefit. Okay, okay. So I think this is benda yang kena push 100% because politics only moves with money. Money means pocket, cerita ada penjimatan, dia tak dapat, dia bising lah. 
kan betul and betul, that's, betul. that's just how i feel it should be pushed lah yeah um and one of the ways is for 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 us to get the public to experience mm. to experience uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh either driving or yeah. even riding in in an ev lah yeah, uh, yeah. so taxi okay, is totally. one of the means lah okay. for us to and we we are quite apa uh, happy lah companies like mysuri and we in fact hopefully more companies will come forward to 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 provide such uh, service lah such uh, t- apa zero emission punya public transportation dalam keadaan mana supply itu susah nak dapat apa yang boleh dilakukan sebenarnya sekarang saya rasa um, okay um, okay kalau supply tak ada tu that's that's fundamental lah pada saya kan I mean, memang susah lah tapi kalau misal kata uh, supply tu ada I mean the, the factories uh, uh, churn out all these vehicles but they only cater for certain markets you know kadang-kadang they prioritize this market untuk ni ya ni dia 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 low priority i think um, we should influence the government can also influence these companies to prioritize malaysia as well you know by by betul lah all these uh, incentives all these gula-gula lah sweets kan sweeteners ni um, they have the power to do that they have the opportunity to do that sebenarnya and and uh, that's why we are we are keep on engaging and and getting getting the government to to uh, provide all this so that car importers and OEMs can can reach out to these suppliers hey i mean you bring it here you know it's it's we got all these incentives and your your products will be acceptable accepted by by the public and the marketability is high so this is ini yang situation yang ni yang kita nak sebenarnya So, so since uh, sembilan dah sembilan bulan ni, hmm? selepas kerajaan bagi kelebihan-kelebihan ni, hmm. adakah sikap kerajaan terhadap EV juga sudah berubah kaya rasa? Saya rasa sudah. Saya rasa sudah sebab um, even the PM himself yang cakap uh, yang yang nampak uh, a bit apa uh, uh, positif mengenai mengenai EV, and then it trickles down to to the government punya apa nama ni uh, uh, top management also. So dengan adanya EV Task Force dengan adanya efforts daripada MOT, efforts daripada MOF, effort, I mean memang memang kita nampak lah. So you dah ada wish list lah untuk bajet tahun ni. Oh yes yes yes. Ziba, is it, it going to be uh, more it's a bigger wish list daripada tahun lepas ke macam mana? Because I tanya ni kenapa because I, t- I minta daripada Toyota daripada all these car companies lah yang I dapat balik daripada Toyota dengan Proton ada wish list tapi wish list macam kalau aku, aku minta lebih sikit, kenapa aku minta sikit sangat? <laughs> so, I was quite uh, curious about that. Okay, anyway, kita dah sampai ke penghujung bahagian satu. Uh, datang balik besok untuk bahagian dua. Uh, jangan lupa untuk tekan butang like dan subscribe. Dan macam biasa lah, uh, tekan butang kongsi kerana kawan-kawan. Eh. Dan uh, jangan lupa untuk datang balik minggu depan. Tekan butang loceng tu sebetulnya ketinggalan. Mandu Malaysia pun yang beremah. Kita jumpa lagi insyaAllah. Okay.